Avi, I want to, there's so much to follow up on here, but I want to ask you um, a question about um, the current of astronomy that goes back centuries um, that is actually resolutely um, against not only geocentrism, but, but anthrop anthropocentrism. And I, I hear that in what you're saying. You're, you're echoing, um, of course, Copernicus. Um, and I think generations, uh, many generations of astronomers who have been extremely suspicious, um, uh, again, not only of uh, the old geocentrism, which w we got over, but of, but of anthropocentrism. And something you said, uh, you know, some minutes ago that I found striking was, I mean, you, you clearly don't think that we in the present today and those of us in the most prosperous countries um, are, are the pinnacle of humanity, uh, far from it. So, so what, what is it about astronomy that, uh, is a discipline that, that might uniquely, uh, make you a proponent of this view? Oh, it's a sense of, uh, cosmic modesty. I think it's arrogant of us to imagine that we are, uh, you know, the most important outcome uh, of the universe. Um, and I was actually visited by um, a, a group of scholars from Christianity Today, an organization, uh, a religious organization, and, and they asked me what would the, the discovery of extraterrestrial mean for their faith, for their religious belief. And I said, look, I have two daughters, and when the second one was born, it didn't take away any of the love that I have to the first one. So imagining that God is a parent that can attend only to one child is very limiting. Uh, and uh, we might have siblings out there and it shouldn't affect your religious beliefs. Uh, you might get jealous that the siblings, some of the siblings are more accomplished than you are. You know, that happens within families, but, but uh, it should not take away anything from, from your faith. And, and they accepted that. And, um, you know, the, the idea that uh, we are all powerful, you know, that uh, goes back to Friedrich Nietzsche saying God is dead. And he, was, he had a, a vision of a, a superhuman, someone that, uh, you know, will be the human of the future. Um, and I see superhumans as may, uh, that, you know, they may have existed for billions of years before us uh, around other stars, because most stars form billions of years before the sun. Um, I just wanted to also mention that uh, with respect to UAP, I, I'm leading the Galileo project, as you mentioned, and uh, we now uh, have three observatories, one in Massachusetts, another one in uh, Pennsylvania, and a third one in Nevada. And this coming month, we'll uh, start uh, using multiple units to get uh, triangulation and distances to objects in the sky that might be anomalous. I asked the research team to monitor the sky uh, after uh, October when the 3i Atlas comes close to the sun, just to check uh, whether there, there is any additional uh, activity in the atmosphere of the Earth as a result of it uh, releasing maybe mini probes. But um, we will get data on a few million objects in the coming year and the most anomalous among them will have distances, velocities, accelerations. And I want to figure, I'm, I'm really not interested in human-made uh, gadgets, you know, that to me they are boring. I want to see if there is anything uh, operating uh, beyond the performance envelope of, of human-made technology. And, uh, and that is, uh, you know, in resonance with what uh, uh, Congresswoman Luna was referring to. Uh, and, and it's quite possible the U.S. government has such data, but... I haven't seen it. Yeah, and this is an important point because uh, one of the difficulties of the uh, the alliance uh, between uh, scientists and retired government officials on the UAP topic is scientists need to see the data. Um, and what you operate with is quantifiable data, um, uh, observational data, et cetera, um, not with testimony um, uh, and certainly not with historical records. I mean, that's, that's the sort of thing uh, uh, cultural anthropologists like me can consider data, but uh, scientists right. can't. And so right. that's created, I, I mean, think, uh, a lot of... Yeah, in this context, I just wanted to clarify that, you know, uh, when I was a child, I was very much uh, struck by uh, the following dynamics during dinner uh, conversations. You know, I would ask a difficult question and the adults in the room would come up with a story. And I was very often disappointed because it seemed to me like the story 
doesn't make sense. And as a kid, I really wanted to figure it out myself. I, I don't didn't want to believe to the adults in the room that pretend to know more than they actually know. And, you know, the privilege of being a scientist is exactly that, uh, which is uh, let's uh, collect evidence and figure out whether the adults in the room are telling us the truth. Uh, and that is exactly also the motivation of um, Congresswoman Luna, uh, you know, in Washington, D.C. And uh, we just want to figure out what is out there. And um, it, there is this tendency of uh, people to hide some of the truth for a variety of reasons. I will not get into that. That's more a subject for the, them to discuss with their therapists. Uh, for me as a scientist, you know, if we have a neighbor, uh, a cosmic neighbor, and we keep insisting in the, in the conversations uh, over dinner, we keep insisting that we have no neighbors, that will not remove the neighbor. It will just maintain our ignorance. Uh, just for the same reason that when the Vatican insisted that the Earth is at the center of the universe, you know, and uh, it didn't change the trajectory of the Earth around the sun. The Earth was orbiting the sun for 4.6 uh, billion years before the Vatican even existed. So the Earth doesn't care about what the Vatican says. Uh, and for the same reason, if we have neighbors, they don't care about what, uh, you know, how the government hides data or how some people in academia do not want to look at anomalies. Um, I, I was actually invited by the Polish government a uh, couple of years ago to uh, give a talk uh, in celebration of uh, uh, the birthday of uh, Nicolaus Copernicus. And uh, I gave a talk about the next Copernican revolution, which is us recognizing that uh, we are not the smartest kid on the block, that we are not at the intellectual center of the universe. Mm -hmm.